Eric and the Firebird Chapter 1 The Apple Teeth A long time ago, in a clearing deep in the forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and their three sons. The two older boys were as bright as buttons, but the third was quiet and slow. Or, at least, that's what everyone thought. The most precious thing that the family had was a tree which grew delicious apples. But there was a problem. Someone was stealing the biggest and the best apples in the night, just as they were about to rip them, so the family had none to take to market. Don't fret, father said the oldest son, Ivan, I will guard the apples. So Ivan sat up and watched it, but in the night he fell asleep. Did you see or uh, hear anything? His father asked it in the next morning. No, nothing, said Ivan. But when his father inspected the tree, more apples had vanished. The next night, the middle son Vanya offered to protect the tree, but he also fell asleep. On the third night, the youngest son Eric offered to stand guard over the tree. There is no chance of you catching the thief, you silly non compoop sneered his brothers. Eric ignored them and went outside. Midnight came and the garden began to glow. Looking up, Eric saw a shining bird picking the best and best and biggest apples. A fire bird, he gasped. He'd heard of them in the stories, but never truly believed they existed. Eric reached out to grab the bird, but with a high-pitched shriek, it flew away. He was left with a single fever in the palm of his hand. Well, Eric, said his father in the next morning, I suppose you fell asleep. Well, Eric, said his father, the next morning, I suppose you fell asleep like the others. No, father. I stayed awake all night, said Eric, and look who has been eating our apples. Eric handed him the feather. His father knew straight away what it was. <gasps> You've seen the marvelous firebird, he gasped. From that day on, Eric's father was a happy man. He didn't ask anyone to protect the tree anymore. For he was delighted to have such a fabulous creature visiting their garden. It meant they didn't have any apples to sell, but somehow the family survived. As time passed, however, there were fewer and fewer apples on the tree, and the firebird visited the garden less and less. Eric's father knew that one day the bird would stop coming. He called his sons to him. I want you to catch the firebird, he told them. I want to keep it in a cage so it can never fly away again. That night the sons kept watch but the firebird never returned to the garden. You must find it, cried their father. So Ivan and Vanya rode off on the family's two horses. Eric had no choice but to take the donkey. The Old Grey Wolf Eric and the donkey plodded off into the forest. But as the day became hot, Eric lay down to rest. 
When he awoke, the donkey was nowhere to be seen. Eric was calling for him. When out of the trees came an old grey wolf. Why are you shouting, boy? asked the wolf. I've lost my donkey, explained Eric. Have you seen him? Oh, was he yours? said the wolf. I'm afraid I ate him. But why do you travel alone in this dangerous part of the forest? My father sent me to find the firebird, said Eric, explaining all that had happened. The firebird lives in the fortress belonging to Ephron, the mighty Tsar. The wolf told him, even with the finest horse, it will take you weeks to get there. Well, I've no chance then, said Eric, for I haven't even got a donkey now. The wolf felt sorry for him. As I'm the one who ate your donkey, I suppose you'd better, I'll better help you, he said. Climb up on my back and hold on tight. Eric did as he was told and the old grey wolf used his magical powers to zip through the forest faster than the eye could follow. Past rivers and lakes they traveled until at long last they came to the high fortress belonging to Tsar Ephraim. The guards are asleep, the wolf whispered to Eric. Climb over the wall. In the arched window stand a golden cage, and in it sits the firebird. Take the bird, but whatever you do, don't move the cage. Eric followed the wolf's first instruction and climbed it over the wall. But when he saw the firebird in its cage, he gasped. The bird was beautiful, but the golden cage was equally stunning, listening and twinkling in the light. Without thinking, Eric reached out, touched and turned the sparkling cage. As soon as he did so, bells rang, peepers peeped, guards came running, and before he could escape, Eric found himself standing before Tsar Ephraim. Who are you? Where are you from, boy? boomed the mighty Tsar. I'm Eric. A woodcutter's son from the deep forest, said Eric, trembling. And, and you dare to come here and steal my rare and precious firebird, growled the Tsar. But your fir firebird stole first, Eric protested. He took my family's best apples, and they were all we had to sell. You are rich, my lord, but we have nothing. The Tsar glared at Eric with hard, cold eyes. I will spare your life, he said at last, and give you a firebird and its cage, but only if you will fetch me Elana, the beautiful daughter of Tsar Dalmat. For I intend to marry her, whether she likes it or not. Eric knew he had no choice, so he went and told the grey wolf what happened. I warned you not to touch that cage, crawled the wolf. It was so beautiful, I just couldn't help myself, said Eric. If you hadn't eaten my poor old donkey, I'd never have been in all this trouble, so now you must help me. With a sign, the wolf agreed. Eric climbed up on his back once more and they raced to the fortress of Tsar Dalmat. Chapter 3 Elena In the blink of an eye and 
with the magic of the wolf, they arrived at the fortress. You wait here, boy, said the wolf, and with one mighty leap, he sprang towards the fortress wall to look for the Tsar's daughter, Elena. At that very moment, the girl came into the garden with her mother and her nurse. The two women were busy talking and bored with their conversation. Elena sat herself down on a bench. Suddenly, the old gray wolf came flowing towards her over the wall. Don't scream, girl, he hissed. I won't hurt you as long as you agree to come away with me. Elena was terrified, but she knew she had no choice. The wolf took her to young Eric, took her to young Eric. Jump onto my back, the creature told them, for Tsar Delmet and his men are after us already. Off they fled through the forest with Elena holding on tight to Eric. I want to go home, she sobbed into his ear. Feeling sorry for her, Eric called the wolf to stop. It's not fair to force Elena to leave her home and family, he said. I know that Tsar told me to steal her away, but now that I've met Elena, there is no way I'm willing to exchange her for a bird. The wolf took pity on the both. Elena must hide them, he said. I will take on her appearance and try to fold the Tsar. So Elena hid in the forest while the wolf used the magic powers to make himself visible as closely as possible. Then he and Eric requ requested an audience with Tsar Efron. Here is the girl you asked me to find, said Eric to the Tsar. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, boy, said the Tsar. You have brought me a beautiful bride, and as a reward you may have my fire bird. So Eric went off with the bird on its golden cage to show Elena, and Tsar Efren married his bride there and then. But when the mighty Tsar lifted his young wife's veil, he discovered that she was not all that he expected. Guards! Guards! He yelled, but the wolf, free from his discus, escaped went the fortless walls. I've been tricked, raged the Tsar. That boy has stolen my bird and left me without nothing. I want my fire bird back. Meanwhile, the wolf found Eric and Elena in the woods, huddled together. Are you happy now, humans? he asked. It. Have I done all you desire it? Eric and Elena looked sadly at the wolf. I've enjoyed my time with Eric, for I liked him very much, said Elena, but I miss my family sorely. You must allow me to return home, and although I have two great treasures, a firebird in its golden cage and the beautiful Elena by my side. They have not made me happy, said Eric. Why ever not? asked the wolf. Because ever since I met you, wolf, I have been cheated and lying, said Eric. I know now that I would rather be poor but honest. Oh, for goodness sake, sighed the wolf. What is in about your humans? You're just so soft. Nevertheless, he agreed to help them. And so, in the stillness of night, Eric and the wolf returned the firebird in its golden cage to fortress of Tsar Ephraim. Then Elena was taken home. Goodbye and thank you, Eric, she said, kissing him on the cheek before climbing over the wall into her garden. I don't know what life will bring us, but I hope we will meet again. 
finally, Eric returned home to his family through the had little to show for all his efforts. Well, we know.